by Capital One. Back inside, Reynolds Coliseum here in Raleigh, North Carolina for game two of the opening round. And two teams that are separated by only 63 miles meeting today. The 13th seeded Elon Phoenix, the Colonial Champs, set to take on the four seed in the SEC State Wolfpack out of the ACC. A look at the bracket in the Kansas City region. Maryland in game number one, the four seed took down the Ivy League Champs in Princeton to advance to Sunday's second round. Alongside Washington Mystics head coach Mike Tebow once again, I'm John Brickley, glad to have you with us. NC State, 82% coach of their scoring comes from their starters and it starts in the center with Chelsea Nelson. One of the most improved players in the ACC, Chelsea Nelson. Uh, inside attacks the basket, gets on the offensive boards, 13 points and almost 10 rebounds a game. Hazel Koenig, the sophomore as well. Akila Mays, she's going to be a playmaker in the front court for the Wolfpack. You know, Mays uh, on the boards with Nelson is a formidable tandem because they attack the offensive glass much like we saw in the first game. That could decide the game in their favor. On the flip side for Elon, they've won 13 in a row. They've got a young team, the sixth youngest roster in the nation, Coach, but they got a veteran presence in Shea Burnett. Shea Burnett plays both the point guard and the off guard, leads their team in scoring, rebounding, and assist first team all conference and was MVP of their tournament last week and that's a look at the lineups on the floor brought to you by Capital One the 11th all-time meeting between these two programs who met back on December 16th it was a 13 point victory for NC State in this very building it was kind of a seesaw game uh, North Carolina State got off to a great start, up, up I think 18 or 20, and in the second half, Elon got right back into it. it was a five-point game going mid-fourth quarter, and then NC State pulled away at the very end. And Shea Burnett, who has been a triple-double machine this year, two, the only two in the program for Elon, was named the most outstanding player in the CAA tournament. As Joe Vasili, Jennifer Rezac, and Norma Jones are officials, NC State in their home white controlling the opening possession. These are two of the best defensive teams in the country and field goal percentage defense. They make everything tough. You're going to have to work for every shot you get. This is a Wolfpack team that lost four starters a year ago. Akila Mays with a shot off the mark. That was 43 and a half points that they're missing. How do the Wolfpack make that up? Well, what they did is that they stuck to their starters. Uh, they, they play a ton of minutes and they're expected to, to do the majority of the scoring, and then they've had improvement. A player like Chelsea Nelson has gotten better. The transfer, Kiara Leslie from Maryland, has helped them you know, as, as she became eligible. Elon with back-to-back -back appearances in the NCAA tournament, defeated Drexel in the championship game of the Colonial. Back-to-back 20-win -back seasons for this program. Sadia Mumford. Number one for Elon, the freshman point guard. As Mayla Johnson off the mark, the conference's top shooter in the Colonial this year. Meanwhile, NC State making their 24th NCAA tournament appearance. Wolfpack, third time in five years under Wes Moore. As Mays counted in the foul. Well, there we talked about right off the top. You know, she and Nelson are going to go right at the rim, put you in trouble here. Get a foul. She's strong enough and long enough to go right at the rim. Got to have quick feet to guard her in there. Mayla Johnson called for the foul. Mays on the Lisa Leslie award list. And the missed shot stays with NC State. Well, much like it was in the first game, offensive rebounding is going to be a factor in this game. Can you limit somebody to one shot? And twice in a row now, North Carolina State's gotten an offensive board and are going to the free throw line again. Kayla Ely will head to the free throw line. Johnson with two quick fouls. Make that one on Johnson. The other one was on Gardner. Now they can't afford to have uh, Johnson get in early foul trouble. Ely known as the floor general for NC State. Has started all 32 games this season along with Chelsea Nelson. So what we saw just in the form of Maryland, NC State is the same way. They're playing with a short rotation. Both teams are for the mo most part. I mean, even Elon really only goes eight deep for the most part. Burnett kick out to Lexi Mercer. The sophomore gets Elon on the board with the three. 
But we watched her shoot yesterday, and that spot on, on the right side of the floor, she ends up on that wing or that corner quite a bit in their offense. Koenig, the feed inside off the mark was Nelson. And a foul that will go against the senior. In transition, when they come down, probably two or three times a half, they try to run that back screen for Nelson over the top, see if they can get her at the rim on a switch with a small guard. Wes Moore in his fifth season has done a remarkable job, especially this year. Had the early losses in November to Rutgers and South Dakota State, finding their form, had a great showing in the ACC tournament, and that victory over Duke in the quarterfinals, the reason why they're hosting. Yes, you know, they, they were one of the three or four teams on the bubble for that 16th spot. And they were terrific in the uh, ACC tournament, losing to Louisville in a really, really good game. Louisville, who went on to win their first ACC tournament title, as Johnson with the bump, that'll be her second. As for Charlotte Smith fans in North Carolina, know what happened back in 94. The game winner against Louisiana Tech in the national championship game, giving North Carolina a title. And, and she'll she still done. talk trash about she it. She will talk. She did yesterday to you. <laughs> yes, she did. Put you in your place. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Koenig. As Leslie comes up with the three. Kiara Leslie averaging 12 points on the year and an answer for the Wolfpack. Yeah, she's been a big addition to this team. A transfer from Maryland. Uh, you know, she kind of fit one of the biggest needs they had after the graduation of all those players this past season. Mercer trying to go inside. Rashika White blocked by Mays. Mays, pass White, unable to convert. White's length really changed that. And the turnover on the other end gives it right back to NC State. Charlotte Smith wasting no time going to her bench, bringing in Jada Graves, number 10 sophomore for Elon, the defensive player of the year. She's also got the sixth player of the year off the bench, the Colonial and White. Koenig out of British Columbia. A catch and shoot three and instead of turnover by Ely. Dragged her pivot foot trying to make that drive to the middle of the floor. Both these teams put so much pressure on you uh, that you have to take care of the basketball. They like to force turnovers. They, they great, as I said at the start, defensive field goal percentage. Both teams holding people in that 35 to 36 percent field goal. That's, that's a great accomplishment. Mumford off the ball screen, lost it. And it will stay with the tie up possession to Elon. It's really a stark contrast for NC State. They're so effective defensively and yet lackluster offensively. Yeah, they, they are a little bit offensively challenged. They need Nelson and Mays to have good games inside. They rely on their post game. They rely on getting to the free throw line. They've shot 252 free throws more than their opponents. Gardner with the miss, offensive rebound. Here's White. And it comes into the hands of Erica Cassell, the sophomore out of Georgia for the Wolfpack. And a beautiful look inside and an easy play as Kiera Leslie starting to find her form here in this early first quarter. And a turnover on the other end for Elon. Two unforced turnovers in transition, just throwing the length of the court out of bounds. Th those are hard to survive. And Charlotte Smith not happy. She's going to her bench quickly. She's going a lot deeper than she normally does right off the bat. Jalen Powell along with... Anna Popovich, a native of England, coming off the bench for Elon. Mix and matching the lineup early on for Charlotte Smith. Yeah, she's already gone to nine players. Leslie looking to stay on fire, and she does. Long range with the three. She's got eight to lead the way for NC State. She's a 30% three-point shooter, but she was so wide open on that one, hard to pass the shot up. 
An 8-0 run for NC State. Popovich drawing contact in the lane. North Carolina State coach is pleading for a traveling call on that. Cassell with the foul, that'll be her first. Well, Leslie at the top of the floor, she's, she's surprised to be that wide open. Great screen, I think, by Mays there to get her open. Defender went under, probably not a good idea going under there. Has been in the lineup the last 24 games, the starting lineup, I should say, for head coach Wes Moore. Everyone loving that a Leslie's back in an N-State uniform. The older brother of C.J. Leslie, who had a great run with the Wolfpack just a couple of years ago. A lot of people were surprised she, she didn't come here right out of high school. And that gets us to a timeout here in Raleigh. Kiara Leslie putting out a show for the Wolfpack. They've got the early six-point lead. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One, official bank and credit card of the NCAA. What's in your wallet? And in part by Google, official cloud of the NCAA. NCAA tournament, it's NC State with the early six-point advantage on Elon. Once again, alongside Mike Tebow, John Brickley with you. First time the Wolfpack have hosted a first and second round regional in 10 years, and actually over 10 years. How they handle the pressure? Well, obviously they've handled it, handled it well so far, but it's tough. You, you wait all year and you say, boy, we'd like to play at home. We'd like to have home court advantage. Uh, but in a one-and-done tournament, all of a sudden, you, you, you wake up that week and go, my gosh, you know, our fans are here. It's, it, it feels, feels like more pressure because you don't want to be the team that gets upset. Mays the feed inside. Nice block by White. We expect high energy here inside the Reynolds Coliseum between these two in-state rivals having met already once this season back on December 16th. As White, that one blocked. And goes in the hands of Koenig. Great help by Akila Mays coming across. And White couldn't see the weak side defender or weak side teammate that was open. Mays, one on one with White, able to draw contact. We'll head to the free throw line. White got popped in the face on the play, too. Bad enough to get a foul on you, but then take the brunt of the punishment. NC State, who has gone 14 and 2 at home this season, had a great showing in the ACC tournament with their wins over North Carolina and Duke. And even Wes Moore alluded to the challenge of being at home for the first time since 2007 hosting a regional in the first and second rounds. You just never know how your players are going to react, whether they're going to be nervous, excited. You know, you know you're going to have that as a natural part of it, but how you handle that. Can you come out and do your normal routine? Can you shoot the ball, you know, like you normally would, or you get too hyped up? In North Carolina... Think about this, just a couple of years ago, we're snubbed in the NCAA tournament. Last year, had a couple of controversial calls go against them in the loss to Texas. And here they are for the third time in five years under Coach Moore. He's just did a wonderful job in a tough situation. When you're trying to be in that era following a great, uh, loved, well-beloved coach, it's tough. You, you've got to have a different kind of mentality to handle all of that. And Powell traveled with the basketball. That is now the third turnover for the Phoenix. You know, of course, we're talking about Kay Yao, who, you know, has meant so much to the game and to this university and has ties to both. Started up the program at Elon before coming over to NC State. Ely lost the handle of it. We we'll take a look at Charlotte Smith with the statue of that three nearly routed home for Elon and the rebound underneath by Cassell. Just been a lid on the basket right now. Good hands right there by Graves. In transition, the Colonial Defensive Player of the Year is going to go to the free throw line. 
And she's so active. She sees passing lanes. So I alluded to this just moments ago, but take a look. Charlotte Smith, the head coach for Elon, next to the statue of Kay Yao, who has meant so much in the fight against breast cancer and has been a driving force, was the first coach for Elon, started up the program, and she is always on the minds and the memories of everyone here in Raleigh and around the nation. Well, I remember going to her funeral here, and I have never been to an event that had that much uh, respect, uh, emotion, uh, the people f that came from all over the country to pay their respects. Uh, it, it was incredible. The effect that she's had on the game. I mean, every team in the pros and, and in this, in the, NCAA, uh, in the NCAA tournament, uh, all these teams have breast health awareness nights, the pink uniforms, raising money for charity. It's been an amazing thing, and how she handled what she went through was such a great example to everybody. And the court dedicated in her honor as NC State here with a 13 to 5 advantage under three minutes to go in this opening quarter. And Nelson traveled with the basketball. The fourth turnover for NC State. And as we saw in game number one between Princeton and Maryland, we're seeing the same. The Stars having issues in the opening quarter. They're having issues. The, the defense is paying a lot of attention to them. Uh, the turnovers have hurt both teams. Uh, and just getting too wound up and getting ahead of themselves. Chelsea Nelson still looking for her first points in this game. Just two shot attempts. Meanwhile, Mercer unable to convert on the three. Maybe just getting a simple rebound like that from Nelson will just kind of get her into the game a little bit. Elon has gone nearly six minutes without a made field goal. And a foul away from the basketball. And Nelson on the cut trying to get to the low block. Uh, fouled. Uh, by Gardner. Mimi Gardner, the senior out of North Carolina, with her second, puts Nelson back to the free throw line. Number one score, number one rebounder for North Carolina State. The NCAA Wrestling Championships continue tonight in Cleveland. Catch the semis at 8 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app, and a special multi mac coverage on ESPN3. And visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Nelson getting her first point, one of two at the free throw line. The first team all CC uh, selection, ACC I should say. Elon has been working so hard to try to get the ball inside that it's almost slowed them down a little bit offensively. I think sometimes when they play their best basketball, they are drive and penetrate and then let their post players clean up by getting on the offensive boards. Leslie stripped of the basketball by Mumford in transition. Mercer and Koenig with a nice reach in. Going to stay with Elon, but great hustle by the sophomore. Great pass to get it to Mercer and greater, greater effort to get it back by Koenig. Elon's got to change things offensively. They've their, missed their last eight shots. It's just so funny when you watch a team practice the day before and they seem smooth on their offense and then it's so disjointed the day of the game. How about that shot by Mumford? Acrobatic. And the freshman point guard, who is a member of the all-rookie team, just commits her first foul. The square is your friend. Get it up there. It's not for decoration. She uses it well. <laughs> Ely to the free throw line out of Raleigh, the floor general who shoots 71% from the free throw line. Had her freshman year cut short, season-ending injury, a torn ACL. Had a red shirt, and she has been an added bonus and an added force to this starting lineup. She really has uh, her quickness uh, in, in offensive transition and her hand quickness and foot quickness on the defensive end. 50 steals this year. Uh, very disruptive against good point guards. Munford. That was a little optimistic after her last play. Armani Hawkins coming off the bench. 
The transfer out of Arizona State with a nice defensive effort. We got lots of referees sitting right behind us, too. <laughs> in case fans can hear that. Under a minute to go in this first quarter, NC State has built up an eight point advantage. DD Rogers missing off the three. And possession will go to Elon. DD Rogers, <laughs> whose father Rodney played at Wake Forest, was an NBA veteran for over 12 years. Stolen, taken away by Hawkins. Three on two for NC State. Bad angle on that pass attempting the low block. Had to throw it on the other side. We got a backdoor play coming up here if we can. Well, Mays, we that it. one poked away. Mercer unable to hold on to it. Elon, 2 of 13 to begin this game. NC State, despite the struggles by Nelson, just one point. They built up a 16 to 8 advantage. Leslie off the mark and the first quarter comes to an end. Elon held to their fewest points in a quarter with just eight. And NC State, the number four seed in this Kansas City region with a 16 to eight lead as we're back to Raleigh in just a moment. Two point Louisiana Tech lead. Seven tenths remains that it all come down to this one final play. Here's the shot, Charlotte Smith. North Carolina's Tar Heels, for the first time, are the champions of women's basketball. It's a moment North Carolina fans still get chills from. Charlotte Smith with the game winner in the 94 National Championship that took down Louisiana Tech. And I'm telling you, she's got a family tree that includes Derek <laughs> Wittenberg, a hero at NC State, David Thompson as well, Alvin Gentry. I said to her in practice yesterday, is there anyone you're not related to? I want to just Photoshop myself back into her family <laughs> pictures just so I can hang out with all those people. An incredible athlete Charlotte Smith was. Nine national championships between being a player, an assistant, and a head coach. Well, we were kidding her yesterday that she, you know, may be able to still get out there and play, and she said, you bet. We so called she, it charlatisms yesterday, the yep. way she was talking to her players. Yes, yeah, it's a good one. Some we can say, some we can't. Meanwhile, Elon's got some trouble in the front court. You've got Gardner along with Johnson, both with two fouls and zero points, but that's a good sign by Burnett. Well, that's what we are talking about at the break, that Burnett hasn't really gotten herself into the game. That's a good little uh, omen for Elon because she needs to be a factor. Jay Burnett, who's only a 26% three-point shooter, ends the struggles for Elon. Good help by Mumford there. We knew the environment here inside Reynolds Coliseum was going to be highly elevated with these two teams separated by 63 miles. Yeah, North Carolina State has uh, has done a wonderful job of hosting this. Uh, their fans are excited about it. You know, they've renovated this arena a couple years ago. The whole atmosphere is terrific in here. Hawkins with five left on the shot clock. Leslie trying to go baseline and that one to Elon. At least she was aware enough to understand where they were in the shot clock. I think a couple of her teammates had lost sight of it. What do you make of the defensive job by Elon to shut down Chelsea Nelson to this point? Well, again, much like the first game, you know, if you're the star of a team and, and, and people know you have to, to be successful for your team to win, you're going to get a lot of attention paid to you. Turnover, Hawkins with possession. You know, Burnett's feeling the same pressure from NC State. Hawkins taking it herself. Wild shot into the hands of Burnett. Let's see if they can get somewhere where Burnett likes to get herself downhill, penetrating toward the rim. Here comes the ball screen. Popovich left open in the corner. Probably needed to shoot that one. Maybe Mays' size bothered her.
Johnson with four on the shot clock. Has to throw it up. And there's Nelson tracking down the loose ball. They'll try to jam it inside as much as they can. Nelson just one point. Meanwhile, Leslie's been able to carry the offensive load for NC State. And they've made a concerted effort to go to Mays instead of Nelson. Stripped of the basketball was the senior ahead. Burnett trying to find Popovich. And it will stay with the Phoenix. The NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues later today. Five Eastern, two Pacific right here on ESPN2 with more first round matchups. Check local listing for the game in your area. And remember that all are streaming live on the ESPN app so you can watch at work. Among the notable games we have seen today, Louisville against Boise State Green Bay, a great matchup as well for the seventh seed. And there's a lot of great storylines in this Kansas City region. Can Mississippi State run the table? What about Texas? Can they be a dagger? UCLA. You know, you've got great matchups. I mean, UCLA put the only loss on Baylor they've had all year. Texas took UConn down to the last minute of the game at Austin. Um, all those teams feel like they can, they can beat the big teams. NC State hosting for the first time since 2007. So many options. Who's in the Final Four? Lots. Uh, <laughs> I'll put UConn in there. Yeah, I'll that's put UConn. Move. And you know, and they got to get through South Carolina again. So, you know, if 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 all goes to form, um, we'll see how Mississippi State handles having a target on their back. You know, last year they didn't have that. Now you now you're one of the favorites. That that becomes different. As Powell knocks right into us, I'll tell you this: my dark horse, the Oregon Ducks. I think UNESCO can carry that team into a Final Four. Their biggest thing will be, can they defend against the best teams? And in some games they have, their foot speed is not the same as some of the teams, but they're a very smart, well-balanced offensive team. Nelson lost her shoe, and in this case, Elon was able to turn the ball over. And Elon take, didn't take advantage of her five-on-four situation. Johnson, the number one shooter in the Colonial, still looking for her first two points. Still only a five-point lead for NC State. And Mumford's going to be called the freshman for the foul. Well, North Carolina State has basically said in transition, we're going to put our head down and we're going to go and we're going to see if the officials will call a foul. And they've gotten a couple of these calls. Elon shooting just 18% from the field. NC State has yet to connect on a field goal in the second quarter. I'm surprised how much Nelson is not involved in the offense, standing on the perimeter more. Now she's in the ball screen. Let's see if they roll her or pop her here. Ely with the shot clock under 10. They work it inside to Mays and draws the foul. And that's going to be the third against Malai Johnson. I thought that was pretty good defense. Ball was swung. They got it inside. I think Johnson felt she was straight up hard to see from where we were sitting. Yeah, she walked into her elbow there. That's a good call. Akila Mays to the free throw line. The senior out of Greensboro, North Carolina. And the players claim a lot, well, I have my hands straight up, but you can't walk into that space with your arms straight up either. How does the dynamic change defensively for Elon with their senior center on the bench with three fouls. Well, I think it becomes, you know, White's job now to try to play uh, the good defense uh, inside on Mays. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do any double team or not. Uh, but they've made a concerted effort to get the ball to Mays. Mumford lost the handle of it, picked up by Hawkins. Elon with seven turnovers in this game. Now this is Mumford's first big time tournament game like this and she's she's played trying to do too much. Nice pass, nice cut. The give and go to Mays who has eight points. Averages over ten per game in the lead. Out to nine, the largest for the Wolfpack. Burnett splits a double team and will go to the free throw line. 
That's what I was expecting to see more of from Burnett here, trying to get herself off the ball screen into the lane. Uh, early on, they were showing hard. She got the defense kind of going back that time, uh, hesitated, and then had a burst to, to the rim. That's her game right there. Leslie with the foul, the first team foul in this game for NC State for Burnett. Go back to last year, Coach. Had the team I 19 points in that last to West Virginia. Leads this team in points and assists. Also has a couple of triple doubles as well. First time that's been done in program history. Now with Johnson on the bench, Coach, how effective can Chelsea Nelson be? Well, you know, that, that hasn't really been the matchup, which is interesting. They've had other people guarding Nelson. Now they're trying to get her on the switch in here, but she's, she's stayed on the perimeter for the most part. It's been the Akila May show on the block. Akila Mays, who was part of the ACC All-Defensive Team this year. Under five minutes to go in this first half. NC State with an eight-point lead. And NC State rolling in the early goings of this first half. Akila Mays has been the force inside. The nice give and go. Wolfpack have an eight-point lead. In Raleigh, we saw the Maryland Terps, the number five seed in the Kansas City region, take down the Princeton Tigers by 20 this afternoon, and it was the triple C of Charles, Kristanaki, and Confroy. Moving without the ball, knocking down threes. They just kept finding each other. Inside, outside, Confroy knocking down the outside shot, Kristanaki making threes. They just had great ball, but particularly in the second half. All three players finished in double figures. They advanced to Sunday's second round, awaiting the winner of this matchup between NC State and Elon. A 20-12 lead here for the Wolfpack, who have seen nothing from Chelsea Nelson, just one point. The offense, as you have alluded to, Coach, has been running through Elisa Mays. And again, Mays draws another foul. I, I, it might be by design to kind of take the pressure off Nelson, knowing that the defense is geared up for it. The scouting report says this and that. And Mays has been able to get, A, Johnson in foul trouble for Elon. And she's been able to get, you know, on the glass. She has eight points um, and has been a factor. And the bigs for Elon of Gardner and Johnson, five combined foul, fouls, I should say, in 11 total minutes on the floor. So that has been a key storyline for us to why NC State has been able to build up this lead. And, and on top of that, we've played uh, close to 16 minutes, and Elon only has three field goals. White turnaround jumper off the mark. And a foul underneath the basket. And we'll keep it with Elon. Yeah, it's not a real good stat when you have three baskets and nine turnovers. You're not going to win too many games doing that to start the game. That goes against Nelson. That'll be her second. She heads to the bench as D.D. Rogers out of Charlotte, North Carolina, comes off for Westmore. We've got a hold on the inbounds here. And Leslie. So for Leslie, that'll be her second. And the third team foul against NC State. Wolfpack have struggled in this second quarter. Just one of six from the floor. And now with Leslie and Nelson, two of their top scorers on the bench. It's been tough just to get the ball in bounds. That's how well North Carolina State has been playing defensively. Here's the ball screen again to see if they can get Burnett going. And that'll go against Hawkins. That'll be her first, so... Elon has been able to, in some way, break through this wall and get to NC State, but the problem has been offensively. They haven't knocked down a field goal Elon has in almost six and a half minutes. Yeah, they need to convert these opportunities. Now they're going to be shooting the, uh, the bonus at the free throw line the rest of the period. Maybe that'll be their way back. White taken away by Ely. Left open for the short jumper is Rodgers. Can't convert. One of seven in the second quarter for the Wolfpack offense. 
Gardner launching it from beyond the arc. That left a little dent on that one. And Jada Graves, a reason why she was the Colonials defensive player of the year with the strip that forces the turnover. She just keeps chasing everything down. NC State with nine turnovers in this first half. Inside the White drives right past Mays for the bucket. The deficit down to six for Elon. That's a great post move going across the lane. Koenig spots up from the elbow and answers on the other end. The sophomore out of British Columbia shooting 35% on the year gets her first two points. She has the purest shooting form of anybody on that team. Um, a lot of her shots are from the three-point line, almost 80%. Graves, long arching three that back irons and rebounded by Mace. I think she settled on that shot. Hawkins on the other end. Play starting to pick up between these two Ooh, teams. They missed uh, White underneath, wide open. Got to get your eyes up in transition. Winner of this game plays Maryland in Sunday's second round. Ely nearly stolen away. Mercer telegraphed that pass. The weak side defense had it sniffed out. And a reminder, the Division I Men's Basketball Championship first round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and on True TV. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. As a Seton Hall grad, it was kind of hard to walk around town yesterday <laughs> after the win by the Pirates over NC State. Your judgment was whether to wear your gear around in front of North Carolina State people. Probably a good decision on your part. <laughs> <laughs> A cloak of darkness, that's what I wore. <laughs> Mimi Gardner, meanwhile, with her third personal foul. Johnson's on the bench, already in foul trouble as well. Under two minutes to go in this first half. Mays, one-on-one -on -one with White. And Elon, despite shooting under 30% in this first half, is still within eight. Fans wanted a push off. Burnett for three. And Westmore is hot. Graves got away with a little elbow and uh, shoulder shove to get herself open. Mays <laughs> lost the handle of it. We'll stay with NC State. And, and, and that and that that call lack thereof of a call got both teams excited. I think this is an offensive foul Those are the calls as to the reason why you don't have any hair anymore. That's exactly right <laughs> Answering with the three however is Koenig Make that now 87 straight games with a made three for the sophomore yeah, we watched her shoot yesterday, and I don't think her expression ever changed. She was being yelled at about different things and do this, and she just kind of kept the same demeanor the whole practice and just keeps knocking down shots. One of four players in the starting lineup averaging double figures for NC State, who has stretched the lead to eight. Mercer can't convert on the layup. They just can't get a bounce on those kind of shots. They're getting to the rim a little bit more now. The ball's not going in. Koenig driving baseline and knocking it down. She's hit the last five points for the longest lead, largest lead, I should say, for NC State. Now into double digits. This is a huge possession right here for Elon. They need some momentum going in at halftime. North Carolina State trying to get the hammer down and get a stop here to end the half. Last seven points all scored for NC State by the sophomore Koenig. And a foul on the other end that goes against Ely that'll put Graves to the free throw line.
Graves not going to be very popular here with the North Carolina State fans because she's been a part of two pretty controversial uh, calls and non-calls. And coming up on the Northwestern Mutual halftime report, we'll check in on a couple of games, including Texas A&M being battle-tested by the 13th seed in Drake. And how about Tennessee, a team that many people predict can make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. They're the enigma team for me because on the nights that they're good, they're really good. Then you then you have head scratcher games with Tennessee. You say, what was that? And uh, they're trying to find some consistency going into the tournament. Final seconds, Koenig. Has to throw one up. And NC State with a 27, a 17 lead on Elon. As that is the end of the first half, let's go to the college basketball halftime report in the studio with the Wolf back up by 10. Time for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Maria Taylor, Rebecca Lobo, and Andy Landers, we are getting you set for day one of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. Awaiting to see who will get the Terrapins in round two in Raleigh. Will it be NC State, the Wolfpack? Will it be Elon? NC State, they are 14-2 and two at home so far this season. Lost those two games by a combined 10 points. So they love playing at home. They get great support. And right now, they're in a defensive battle against Elon. I think that's what we call it when both teams are shooting under 35%. <laughs> All right, that's what we're going with? That's what that's we're going, what we're going with. This is a defensive <laughs> test between these two teams. I mean, and, and you see it reflected in the field goal percentage. They've combined for 20 turnovers in this game. Right now, NC State has a little bit more because of Leslie and Mays. Leslie started out playing really well, hitting threes, getting to, getting to the bucket. Mays' field goal percentage isn't great, but she's been able to find a way to score. And that's what this could end up being, one of those grinded-out games where you just have to find a way to score because the offense – is not coming easy, to put it mildly. No, I'm a little bit surprised with North Carolina State, their ability to knock down the three. There, there's two things you know about NC State. They're going to guard you. We've covered that normally. They're going to hit you with some threes. They haven't done that yet. All right, well, we will see who can get the offensive uh, tank going in the second <laughs> half for Elon and NC State. But let's check in with the only team that's been to every single NCAA tournament. It's the Tennessee Lady Vols, and they're putting in work inside the paint right now, Coach. Yeah, they, they started the game. They had success. In fact, they scored most of their points in the paint. Liberty adjusted their defense to that. They cut them off. They made it more difficult. Tennessee then reacted by saying, you want to take us out of the paint? We'll put the biggest players we have in the game. They went with a big front line, had success, but Liberty has managed to stay in this thing basically because they have shot 5 of 11 from 3. Well, the game that we had first in Knoxville was Oregon State taking on Western Kentucky. Michaela Pivik, she got out on the break, and then it was the oh, Cat no. Tudor show. Oh, no, don't leave Tudor open. That's 42%, and she can back it out farther than that line. She is a terrific three-point shooter. She stretched this defense today, opened her inside partner, popped it in there. Gulick had a big day, big day, shot at 65% from the floor. Yeah, she had 29 points, 11 for 15 shooting, and she had only put up 26 points in her previous three NCAA tournament game appearances. But that great showing from the senior helps Oregon State advance to the second round in Knoxville. We'll see if they get Tennessee or Liberty. Dayton taking on Marquette. It was a close one until Marquette went on a 10-0 run, and then Heidemann decided that, that she just didn't want to be in a close game. Well, she decided a lot in the first half. She decided she was going to score a lot, but most of all, she kept her team fired up on the defensive end. I thought that was the difference in this game. You know, Marquette's defense forcing Dayton into 15 turnovers in the first half. Dayton played reasonably well, except for those turnovers. How about that step back three for the and one in those highlights? All right, Atisha Heideman. Yes, we see you. All right, Louisville, Boise State, they started us off, and the bench was huge. Kyla shook off the bench and really shook things up for them, Coach. Oh, yeah. Jeff Wall said starters aren't going to perform, aren't going to be productive. Here I come with the bench. It was a great move. The bench responded by scoring 15 of their first half points, created a cushion for Louisville at the halftime that they were able to build on in the second half. Look at this play. Louisville ran it twice to Jasmine Jones. Beautiful back cut. And one. How about Asia Durr? Go to your right hand, little lefty. 
Ooh, take the contact and one. The bench scores 33 points for Louisville. And Asia Durr, the ACC Player of the Year, she was 0 for 4 from 3. Her and Maisha Hines-Allen combined for just 13 points. Doesn't matter, though. Louisville, their first time as a one seed. They get to advance, and they await either Marquette or Dayton on Sunday in Louisville. Drake taking on Texas A&M. It's game two in College Station. Take the ball inside, feed the big woman, and she'll feed you, Danny Williams. Oh, of course. You got to send a, a multiple defenders to Hillsman. She gets it back out to Williams. That has worked well. Danny Williams shooting the ball well. But Drake is not going to go away. They will spread you out with players who can shoot and then try to get some looks in the paint as well. Yeah, that was a great shot by Sarah Ryan, the SEC Freshman of the Year, Kennedy Carter with the great dish. <laughs> And Texas A&M has created some separation for their head coach, Gary Blair. Oklahoma taking on DePaul. This is what we knew would happen, Rebecca. Threes would fall for the Blue Demons. They would fly and they would fall early. They made five of their first five that opened things up for them to get some dribble penetration. Oklahoma made it interesting, made a run, got out in transition. They were good from the free throw line, made 25 free throws on the day, but ultimately it was too much DePaul got scoring from a lot of different places. Yeah, DePaul advances to the second round for the fifth consecutive season, and they had four players score at least 15 points, so it was a great offensive day for DePaul. Texas A&M and Drake, we will still see who gets to survive and advance in College Station for the second round Sunday matchup against those Blue Demons. Right now, it is halftime between NC State and Elon, and right now the Wolfpack trying to make it 15-2 and two at home on the season. This halftime report is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. You're watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Back in Raleigh, the number four seed, NC State, with the lead on the 13th seed, Elon, as we get set for the third quarter. Once again, Mike Debo, John Brickley with you. That was not the prettiest no. of halves for either side, but for NC State, they've got the 10-point lead, despite the fact Chelsea Nelson only has one point. Yeah, she wasn't even involved in the offense early, and then got herself in foul trouble, so spent a lot of time on the bench. But Kiara Leslie and Ace Koenig did, did the lot, uh, job. Leslie early with the three, one at the top, a drive. She got him jump started, wide open at the top, and then Koenig finished the quarter in the second quarter on a little 7 0 run of her own. Uh, pull up jump shot, drive to the basket, three on the wing. But again, like we talked about earlier in the day, if your star hasn't got it going, you need somebody else to step up, and those two have done the job. And she scored the last seven, did Ace Koenig. You take a look at the first half stats, both teams shooting under 35%. Neither side getting any productivity from the bench with a combined 20 turnovers in that first half. If you're Elon, how do you break through this deficit? Well, I think, first of all, you have to have a good possession every time down. You can't have empty possessions where you don't get a shot. You don't get a shot that you like. That's a good start right there. Get it inside to one of your better post players. Malaya Johnson, the senior with her first two points, the Colonial's top shooting performer this year. Oh, got the mismatch on the post right there. They work it back inside to Mays, who draws the double team. And it's Johnson coming down with the rebound. Well, Elon again needs to string together a couple good possessions, good pump fake, nice drive. Burnett, who had seven first half points to lead the way for Elon. We saw stretches of this offense go at least six minutes without a made field goal. And that they were only down by 10 at the time. This is a struggle to get it in again on the inbounds play. This has been kind of their go-to to get Burnett going is at the ball screen at the top. Darno with the corner three off the mark. Mays there for the rebound. One of the questions looming for NC State has been the pressure of hosting first and second round for the first time since 2007. Even Wes Moore in shoot rounds yesterday admitted there's a little added pressure when you've got a host to try to win. You got nerves. You, your fans, you know, are expecting a lot. You feel it as a player when your fans are talking about it. Um, 
I think I mean, just right there, Lesser has been one of the ones that's handled it the best, but she's a player who came from Maryland in a program that's used to being in these kind of games. Tierra Leslie now in double figures for the for both teams. The first to get to 10 points. Average 12 on the year. As Johnson spots up against Mays, off the mark on that shot. The positive, other positive side of this right now for North Carolina State is they have survived Nelson not being a part of it and have a 10-point lead. Because they've had Koenig doing a driving baseline, the sophomore now with nine points and a quick timeout taken by Charlotte Smith and the Elon Phoenix. Kiara Leslie has been the story to this point. Ten points on four of seven shooting and NC State rolling in this third quarter. John Brickley, Mike Tebow back with you. NC State, the number four seed, a 31 to 19 lead on Elon. And Kiara Leslie has been phenomenal to this point, carrying the offensive load. Well, she appears amongst all the players on the court to be the most calm out here about the moment in this opening round game. She's played with poise. There's been no, she, she's played with this great demeanor right now and is knocking down open shots. The transfer from Maryland who potentially they could see in the second round if they come up with a victory here today against the Phoenix. She only had nine points in the ACC tournament against Louisville, but here today rebounding well in a performance for the Wolfpack. Koenig works it to the low post. Good ball movement. Nelson just one point for the leading score and the leading rebounder for the Wolfpack. That almost felt like a heat check shot just to see if I can get myself going in the game. Uh, I'm used to seeing her drive from that spot or get the ball in the low block or mid-range. Uh, that's not her game necessarily shooting that shot consistently. Shot clock under 10. Mercer inside to Johnson. Great left-handed move, unable to convert. And Elon, despite the fact that they have been shooting just over 20%, still are only down by 12. That's, that's an amazing part of this game. And the other interesting part of it is that they're kind of in the same position they were at when they played here earlier in the season. Down early in the second half, uh, low double digits, and got back in the game. Chelsea Nelson, a first-team All-ACC selection with her first made field goal of the day coming at the 640 mark of this third quarter. Averages over 13 a game, just three points so far for the senior. Graves spots up from the wing. Ely heads up in transition. Leslie with the bump. And it'll be Mercer that's called for the foul. I don't think that Elon can can survive or, or right now getting back in the game can live with Graves taking threes. I think they need to get to the basket. They need to get the ball in the best player's hands. She's a defensive player. Maryland head coach Brenda Freeze in attendance after the Terps took down the Princeton Tigers in the first round from Raleigh today, winning by 20. And I asked you before and I'll ask you again. Brenda Freeze, who has now made it 15 straight first round victories. Who's the better matchup for the Maryland Terps? Well, if I were watching this game, I'd want to go out and play <laughs> Elon right now. <laughs> uh, it's a coin flip. Yeah, really. I mean, a lot of things change, you know. It, 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 what you see in this game is not necessarily what you see, you know, in 48 hours either. Koenig off the turnover, numbers the other way for NC State. And a nice job by Powell to deflect that momentarily. And Graves. May is able to come with it. Koenig for three, and she gets it. That's a great find by Graves. Everybody's scrambling. The ball's being tipped all over the place. In the midst of all the chaos, she finds their best three-point shooter. Koenig, who was tied for third in the ACC this year with just under three pointers made per game. She's got 12 to this point, including a pair of threes. A 10-0 run for NC State has stretched out this lead to 18. And Powell with a nice jumper on the other end to answer for Elon. That's a nice looking jump shot off the dribble right there. That's pretty good. Just another one of the freshmen that Elon has. 
Sixth youngest roster in the nation for Charlotte Smith. And a foul away from the ball. Well, here again, scramble for loose ball. Everybody's in it. Graves knocking the ball loose. Mays comes up with it and goes cross court to the best three point shooter on the court, and she knocks it down. I like the fact that Koenig's always ready to shoot on the perimeter. Koenig again, catch and shoot three, way off the mark. And NC State arguing it went off of an Elon player, but instead the Phoenix will have possession. Timeout on the floor, NC State up by 16. Back in Raleigh, NC State has built up a 16-point lead here in this third quarter. Maryland head coach Brenda Freeze and her Maryland Terps awaiting the winner of this game as we take a look at the Kansas City region in the NCAA tournament. Mississippi State, the number one seed, going up and looking to see who they may face, Syracuse or Oklahoma State. But Bulldogs, for how good they were in the SEC tournament, still have something to prove after that loss to South Carolina. Yeah, they do, and I think, you know, uh, it, it brought them back to a little bit of reality that, you know, the team that's been their biggest nemesis, uh, they got beat by again. They haven't solved everything. Uh, and if they win their first game, they're going to play a team in the second round, whether it's Syracuse or Oklahoma State, that they played earlier this year, and it was a three-point game with Oklahoma State. Meanwhile, NC State, the number four seed in this region. That victory against Duke in the ACC tournament propelled the Wolfpack into the top 16. Mays off the mark on that shot. Both these teams combined, combined in this game, have made 19 field goals. Yeah, uh, I, I love offense, so I'm struggling uh, uh, to find the bright spots in these offenses. I've had to hold you up a couple of times in this game, Coach. Burnett, moon shot three that falls for Elon. She has, you know, they time punters for hang time. She's got that on her shot on the three. That puts her into double figures with 10. Now 26 games in double figures, a perfect three of three from beyond the arc. And here's Leslie stepping through and answering for NC State. That's just too easy. No help defense. You know, and, and, and this is a team, Elon, who's, you know, well regarded on the defensive end, and they've had some huge lapses on people going to the basket today. Leslie, who has exceeded her season average, 13 points today. Well, Shea Burnett had a struggle today trying to figure out they just go to sleep on her, go underneath the screen, and she, she just knocks it down. Shea Burnett, who ranks top five in a number of categories in Elon history, fourth in points, second in assists. She is one of the all-time greats for this Phoenix program. That one rattles through, and she has scored the last five for Elon, and it's a 39 26 advantage for the Wolfpack. Well, if they can get a couple stops in a row and keep NC State from going right to the rim like that. And Healy answers on the other end as these two teams trading buckets. I wasted my breath right there. They did it quicker than I could talk about it. It's incredible to think, Coach, that for all the Superlatives that go with one Chelsea Nelson. It's not been her day today. Just three points. Meanwhile, Koenig along with Leslie have combined for 25 points. Well, if they if they finish out this game with the win, uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of reaction Chelsea Nelson has to a game like this. Does it inspire her to do a better job on Sunday? And it's not all her fault. I mean, the defense is geared a little bit to take her way. They've been trying to get the ball inside to Mays, and they've had success with Leslie and Koenig on the wings. But it's not been pretty. Burnett, who was called for her first foul. I mean, Nelson, there's so much talk around here having potential WNBA stock. Maybe it's potentially rising, but a game like this, what have you seen as the biggest issue to her struggles today? Well, today, I mean, she hasn't even had very many uh, opportunities to do things. Um, she hasn't been, she's even smiling on this one. I don't even think she got fouled on this one. She just missed the shot. 
Uh, she might, she knows she might have got away with one here. And that'll be Johnson's fourth. But for Nelson, I mean, she hasn't been able to play to her strengths today. Her strengths are on the block or on the elbows to attack in the 15-foot, 17-foot and in range. She's been a decoy almost in their offense today. Nelson, who has had a streak of eight straight games in double figures, you'd have to think with her struggles today, she knocks down one of two, that could be in jeopardy. But again, if you're Coach Wes Moore, you have to look at some of the positives and see the fact that you've got two other viable scoring options if your player struggles. Uh, and, the, and the other thing is, you know, they, they have recognized that as a team, but what, what Nelson needs to recognize to help those guys out is, okay, I'm not going to get the ball where I normally do. How can I help this team? All right, let me be a better screen setter. Let me get to the offensive boards and get a couple things going that way. That'll get me to the free throw line. That changes your game in a hurry when you can make those extra plays somewhere. Closing in on the final two minutes of this third quarter. Garner for three, and she gets it to fall. You almost see now, Coach, every time that the Elon players make a bucket, it's almost frustration that they haven't been going down quicker before. Well, and, and there's so much time left to play. I mean, we have almost 12 minutes left in this game to play. First double-digit quarter in scoring for Elon. They were held to eight points in the first quarter, nine in the second. White, and draws contact, will go to the free-throw line. That, that pass was almost intercepted by her teammate. Uh, Burnett saw uh, White up the floor, and, and I'm not sure which guard it was. I think it was Powell actually almost cut in front and intercepted the pass. White, who had 20 points in that meeting versus NC State back on December 16th at the free throw line for Elon, knocking down the first. The road to the Frozen Four ices up Sunday with the 2018 NCAA Hockey Special Selection at noon Eastern on ESPNU and on the ESPN app. And visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. White out of Charlotte, North Carolina. This is the second. And it's a 12-point advantage here in this closing Minute 25, it's third quarter. Winner advances to the second round Sunday, awaiting Maryland after their victory over Princeton. Nelson, short jumper. That one falls for Chelsea Nelson, her second made field goal. She's got six. That's more of the Chelsea Nelson that uh, people have gotten used to this year. Put the ball on the floor, one dribble, get a mid-range pull-up jump shot. Gardner draws the assignment from Nelson. They're trying so hard, Elon is, to get the ball in the post on that last one where it's where it's knocked out of bounds. They have shooters. Here's the pull up off two dribbles. Little, little step back on the baseline, 15 foot. That's her game right there. White spin around in the lane. Nelson with the rebound. She had 22 rebounds. Let's not forget a record in the ACC tournament in the victory over Duke. She's got nine now. Now she's looking to go long range, and she's starting to feel it from beyond the arc. That, those are bonus points. Uh, she's got nice shooting form. She just doesn't shoot very many of those. And how about this? Despite her struggles today, Coach, she's one point away and a rebound away from another double-double. Exactly. The good thing for her is that her demeanor has not changed much. She's kept playing despite you know, not being that involved. Elon holding for the last shot. Mercer with some tough defense. White, great step to the basket. Unable to convert. And NC State behind the play of their star senior center, Chelsea Nelson. Nine points, nine boards. They've got a 17-point lead at the end of three.
Elon with a productive third quarter, getting into double digits for the first time in this game tonight. But NC State with a 17-point advantage. And coach, let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. Well, Kiara Leslie has uh, been the, the steady Eddie for the game. Getting to the basket uh, early in the game, knocking down threes, uh, getting on the boards. She's just been kind of a calming influence for this. And I know for Wes Moore, a stat that'll stick out for him, put a smile on his face. Zero turnovers in that third quarter. That was huge, given how the game had been played so far. That was, that was a, a clean quarter. They got good looks almost every time down the floor. And we jinxed him. <laughs> so NC State for the third time in five years under Westmore making an NCAA tournament. Even the players yesterday, you could tell the pressure, the emotion of being back in the tournament, especially how last year ended. It's a really remarkable turnaround for Westmore and this team playing with a depleted lineup. It really is, and you know, you could say theirs was probably the most intense of the four practices yesterday. You know, I think in preparation, and they were the one team today who, who did the early shoot around. Uh, some teams wisely not getting up at 6 or 7 a.m. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they felt it. I mean, you could tell that, you know, they were excited but nervous at the same time. Looking to go back to back years to the second round if they can hold on for this victory against Elon today. Elon, their shooting rows have continued in this half, shooting under 30%. 25% overall for an offense that shoots normally 45% on the season tops in the Colonial. Yeah, North Carolina State, though, has hung their hat on defense. So, you know, an offense like Elon's, you're playing uh, a high-level defensive team. Nice hustle by Leslie. Five on the shot clock. Cassell, nothing but nylon on that three-point shot. And that stretches it out. Uh, that puts it really uh, a tough uh, number on Elon right now. Just the third made three this season for Erica Cassell. The lead up to 20. It's largest of the game. And Elon with a quick answer. It's just, it, it, you're the opposing coach. You just shake your head on shots like that. That's not part of the scouting report. Shot clock to eight for Koenig. Left open, Cassell, long two, and knocks it down. I want what she had for breakfast. I'm telling you, the bench players in both <laughs> these games we have seen come through in a big way. Cassell has scored the last five, and even Chelsea Nelson has a smile on her face. Both, both she and Cassell were, were just laughing coming down the court. It's like, man, this is easy all of a sudden. <laughs> But it's kind of what happened with Maryland in, in the second half. You know, you got a little momentum, you start feeling good about yourself, and now everybody, it's contagious. Coming into this game, Erica Cassell was shooting 9% from beyond the arc. 9% from beyond the arc. Well, she got her shot blocked. She said, this stuff doesn't work. Let me just run out of here where nobody's going to block my shot. Here we go. Wide open here, just back up a little bit. You know what I've noticed too? The fans behind us are a lot more happier in the second <laughs> half. <laughs> They're not refereeing quite as hard, I know that. Look at, the, look at the attention that Nelson gets though. Three defenders there when she gets it on the block. Do you think Nelson has the skill set to make it to the WNBA? No, um, you know, we've talked about it as a staff. We've watched her. One of my assistants, Marianne Stanley, lives down here. Um, she's, you know, at best 6'2". Uh, the, the four position in our league right now is becoming a stretch four, much like the NBA, knocking down longer shots. Now, that three she took looked like a nice shot. If she can face up and make shots like that and keep her rebounding game intact, then she's got a chance to play at the next level. You know, there aren't very many roster spots in the WNBA coming out as a rookie. But go overseas and work on your game, too. Erica Cassell with another three-point shot. Go to Vegas. Who saw this coming from Erica Cassell? I don't think Erica Cassell did. She has matched her season total of three-point <laughs> shooting in one game today. NC State on fire. Thanks to the bench.
The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One, official bank and credit card of the NCAA. What's in your wallet? And in part by Mountain Dew Ice. NC State rolling here in Raleigh against their in-state rival, Elon. I know the stars shine before the role players are playing a factor today, including Erica Cassell. Well, as you said, she's made only a couple threes all year, and then she shows up with three today. Chelsea Nelson has two, uh, three threes all year, makes one in this run, and they've just gotten, it's contagious, like hitters in baseball. Everybody goes up to the plate, starts hitting, everybody else joins in. Erica Cassell had two made threes on the season coming into this game. She was held scoreless for through the first three quarters, and all of a sudden, lightning struck in a bottle. Well, she, she makes the first one uh, out here in front of their bench, and she's so wide open on the next one, she says, I got to try this one. All right, well, here we go. Might as well do another one. Cassell, who has scored all eight points in this fourth quarter for NC State, and they have stretched out the lead to 55-32. And now they're having the fun part of the game. You know, the game, they know that the, the, the finish line is there. There's six minutes plus to go, and they've got a comfortable lead. They can play a little bit more relaxed. Ely, just like that, steps right through with the layup. Now the question becomes, what do you make of the prospects for this NC State team moving on in a difficult Kansas City region? Well, Maryland's going to be tested. They're very similar in matchups in size. Uh, at each position, they have similar kinds of players. Uh, you know, both have uh, perimeter three-point shooters, Confoy for Maryland, uh, you know, Leslie and uh, Koenig uh, for North Carolina State, Kristanaki for Maryland. You've got post players who rebound the ball. Uh, they both force turnovers. It'll be interesting. It'll be a little bit of a test of wills uh, on Sunday. And you'd have to imagine the best benefit for Wes Moore is the fact that his star player in Chelsea Nelson has struggled today by all accounts, and yet they found the play in Koenig along with Leslie as well. And so NC State with their largest lead today, 25 points. Just 531 away from advancing to the second round Sunday where they meet up with a Maryland team that came over, beat up on Princeton, winning by 20, but they too saw their star player in Charles at least struggle in that first half. Yeah, she did, and then she got herself going by pushing the ball in tempo, uh, in transition, uh, getting on the offensive boards, uh, getting some drives from the top of the key. Uh, both teams can take a little bit of a deep breath. It'll be fun because you got two former foes from the old ACC together. Um, you got, you know, uh, players on both teams that have been recruited by both teams. Uh, it'll be a great matchup. Kara Leslie going against her old teammates. Leslie, who's got 13 points on five of eight shooting, the transfer from Maryland, as coach just alluded to. Both teams playing with a short rotation. As Cassell will head to the free throw line. Well, Cassell and, and Hawkins are kind of expanding, and Crutchfield even also, kind of expanding the rotation for NC State today. Uh, you know, I don't know if this will spur Westmore to play them more on uh, on Sunday, but you know he's got he's got production from different bench players today. One of the storylines coming into this game was the pressure for NC State hosting for the first time in over a decade. How would that challenge present itself to the coaches and to the players? NC State holds on. Does that relieve some of that stress? I think it does. I think the the, the first game is the one you want to win. The first one, get to that four or five matchup that. You know, everybody understands it'll be a good game. Um, I think you can take a deep breath. You know, a, a one and done situation uh, is so different than, you know, what I've you know, had in the playoff series and the pros that once you win one like that, even though the pressure is still on, you know, in the ultimate tournament scene, I just think winning a game uh, like this gets you, gets you some momentum, gets you a good feeling about how you're playing. And then on the other side, you have an Elon team, sixth youngest in the nation. They've won 13 in a row, battle-tested against NC State the first time around. And even Charlotte Smith jokingly said to us, as much experience as we're bringing back, it still feels like it's a daycare center in the sense of <laughs> yes. there's still a lot of youth and still a lot of teaching. Yeah, I mean, sophomores and freshmen dominate this team, only two seniors. Um, and they, uh, it's, this is a learning experience game. They haven't handled it. Uh, the way she would like, the way they would like. They've made what I would call freshman mistakes. 
uh, their young players just have. 15 you turnovers. Have to go through it. Yep. Like we just saw with Powell, the freshman, with the yep. turnover on the travel. But you don't ever get to the next step until you go through this one to, to get the experience. Know what this is like. There's a lot of intrigue surrounding this NC State team, especially after what they did in the ACC tournament with their victories over North Carolina, with the win against Duke. They, they fought hard against Louisville. They're a team that could surprise a lot of people. Well, for one, they play hard all the time. They play at both ends of the court. They contest things. They help each other on defense. They rebound the ball. They get to the free throw line. Inconsistent as a shooting team, but I can't, I, they kind of know who they are, too. And that's why that's half the battle sometimes, knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are and, and playing to that. Koenig has to shoot up a three and a shot clock violation. She has been brilliant today. 12 points on five of eight shooting. And yet for Elon, the biggest storyline coming in has been their struggles on offense today. Once again, now over five minutes without a made field goal. Yeah, they've had some long droughts in this game. And part of it is it's self-inflicted and not even getting shots off uh, with the turnovers and others just taking tough shots. I think they've missed open teammates on the weak side when they've tried to jam it inside sometimes. Erica Cassell saw moments ago on the bench what a lightning rod she was a spark off the bench with her nine points. NC State hasn't lost a home tournament game since 83. They were 14 and 2 this year at home. Another turnover. And it should really present a great matchup for Sunday against Maryland. Two teams nearly identical to one, one another. And there's a, there's a there's a lingering rival with with AC teams, ACC teams in Maryland. You know, them leaving the conference, going to the Big Ten. The ACC teams still want to, you know, put them in their sights. A 10-0 run now for NC State. A 60 to 32 advantage with less than 2.30 left to play in this game. The reserves coming out for both sides and a timeout for a substitution. Sports Center after the NCAA Wrestling Championships on ESPN with John Anderson and Kenny Mayne. They'll have first look at the Clippers and Thunder with post-game reactions, plus what Tiger's second round at Bay Hill may mean to his master's prep and your Friday night March Madness fix. Sports Center at night, 10.30 Eastern on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Saw today on the men's side, Marshall with the big upset victory over Wichita State. A lot of people thought that that Wichita State team was going to make a deep run in the tournament. Yeah, that's the, I, I, every year I think, okay, this is the year that it's going to be chalk. And then last night started, and you had Loyola Chicago, and you had uh, Rhode Island, and you had, you know, all the Buffalo, and you have all these games. Now today we have another one. Uh, that's what makes the tournament so exciting for everybody. That's why people love filling out the brackets and doing all that because it's so unpredictable. I love the fact that people ask for my advice, like I know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm the worst person for advice on a bracket. Well, I was, I'm supposed to know all the women's game, and there's still going to be some upsets this weekend in the women's game that, you know, there probably aren't going to be as many as, as in the men's, but I'm going to make a mistake here somewhere on this. Do you see every number one seed on the women's side making it to Columbus? Not necessarily, but I can't say. I know why. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, there's Let's just say it's a team in the SEC. Well, it's just hard. I mean, I, and, I, and I don't even mean that. You know, you have uh, number two seeds in each of the brackets who are capable of winning. I mean, all of them were considered, you know, maybe at one time as a one seed. I mean, Baylor, people debated, should they be a one seed? You know, uh, Texas at one time was playing that well. South Carolina. You have those kind of teams. I thought it was interesting being in studio this year and watching all the games on a grander scale. The fact that three of the four two seats were conference champions says something about the depth in women's college basketball. It does. I mean, I think, you know, five or six years ago, you could probably put on one hand the teams you felt confident about going to the Final Four. Now that list is expanded. Ball out of bounds will stay with Elon. 
What do you make of the direction, Coach, on this Elon program under Charlotte Smith? Has done a great job with back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. A pair of Colonial Championships as well. As the reserves are coming off the court now as Burnett heads to the bench. NC State fans gearing up for a matchup against Maryland in Sunday's second round. North Carolina State fans uh, yelling for Katie Wadsworth who uh, comes off the bench for them. Uh, I'm not, I think she's a walk-on player, uh, but they all they were all happy to see her get up off the bench. How much you want to bet that Wadsworth is going to get a shot off at some point? I hope so. They just ran a triple screen for her. Wadsworth working inside. Here's Crutchfield. Sees a lane with the left hand and gets it to fall. Ty Crutchfield from here in Raleigh. A four-star prospect in high school out of Millbrook. Less than a minute to go. NC State going to improve to 25 and 8 after their victory here today. And I know we just barely touched on it, but when Burnett walked off uh, again, another tough moment for, you know, a senior in her last game at Elon. All she's done to elevate that program. Um, just so uh, pleased to watch what she has done over the course of her career there uh, to elevate uh, the Elon Phoenix. 12 points, six rebounds, four assists. And they're looking at the shot clock right now or the officials. I'm not sure if the clock froze at one point here and they're putting it, uh, resetting it back. We're going back to Burnett for a second, coach. She's going to leave with a number of accolades. Top 10 in a number of categories. Was phenomenal last year in that loss in the first round to West Virginia. Had a team high 19 points, but again, such a youthful team for Elon, sixth youngest team in the country, and despite back-to-back -back conference titles. You could see the emotion there on her face on the bench. Um, you know, it just oh finally God. hits you that, hey, I'm done playing college basketball. You know, these are people I've grown up with, I've become an adult with. Um, you know, a, a, a good team is really a family, and you know, when, when somebody's about ready to leave the family, it's hard. This team also is going to lose Mimi Gardner along with Malaya Johnson. A lot of room for growth for Elon. But for NC State, they're setting their sights on a second straight spot in the second round coming up on Sunday right back here inside Reynolds Coliseum. I think the biggest factor for NC State, especially in this game, is Wadsworth throws up a three, and that one nearly went down. It's going to be the fact that they've already got a home victory under their belt in the tournament. They're trying to work it to Wadsworth again. 15 on the clock. Wadsworth back irons. Boy, this place is ready to erupt. And in the closing seconds, NC State with a resounding win over Elon to advance to the second round on Sunday where they will meet up with the Maryland Terps. Chelsea Nelson didn't play her best game. Didn't matter, though. NC State a winner. 62-35, a second straight trip to the second round. And that sets up NC State and Maryland. Let's get you back to the studio. We'll get you caught up on all the latest scores. All right, thank you so much, Brickley. We have a matchup between Elon and NC State going down in Raleigh. It is the Kansas City region, and Kiara Leslie, she was going early for NC State, and then it was Koenig driving for the lay-in. Yeah, the backcourt played well for NC State. This is a game that did not have a lot of points in the first half. But NC State had enough, and they knew with their defense they could slow Elon down. They were able to effectively do that. Seven for 17 from three as well for NC State. So NC State, they survive. And next up for the Wolf Pack, that will be the Maryland Terrapins. NC State, they are now 15 and two in games played at home. And those two losses came by a combined 10 points. So this team, very tough to play at home. Let's see who they get.
Well, I already mentioned it. It's Princeton taking on Maryland, <laughs> the Kansas City region. Eliana Kristanaki, a little bit more of her. The jumper's good from the baseline. And Maryland was really good and in a lot of levels. They transitioned game going. They made their perimeter shots. They were 7 of 14 from 3. They got on the offensive glass. And whenever Princeton made a run, they were able to answer. Just a nice offensive day for the for Mar Maryland Terrapins. I mean, it's a tongue twister. I get it. Yep. Kyla Charles, she was good underneath. Kristen Confroy knocks down the three. Maryland outscored Princeton 20 to four in second chance points. And Kyla Charles had 20 points, and she scored 15 total points in her previous three NCAA tournament games. I feel like I keep saying that, but for the first time, we're seeing some major players in the NCAA tournament games, and they're playing big time. So take a look at your Kansas City region. Maryland taking on NC State. Terrapins, welcome back to the ACC. Mm -hmm. You get the wolf back at home. <laughs> It'll be fun to see that matchup. Yeah, yeah, you're used to that matchup, right?